Hi, I just finished this graphic novel, Muhammad Ali, and it's uh, originally was uh, published in Europe in 2014, and then was picked up by Dark Horse the following year. And it was published, I believe, in 2000, late 2015, I believe. And it's written by Sybil Titu, or Tito, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, I apologize, and Amazing Amazian. And I like this very much because, first of all, I, I love this cover. I like the yellow and the white. It just it sticks out. And also, this is just my opinion. I think somebody like Ali, who was controversial then, who's still kind of controversial now, very controversial then because he was black, he was outspoken, he was the best boxer alive when he was a champion. He converted to um, Islam, um, which was not popular in the 60s. And... Um, he was a conscientious objector to the draft. So he had a lot of things that a lot of people admired him for and a lot of people hated him for. So I think that to not have that spin of like he was a good guy, he was a bad guy, I think it's good when you get a well-researched part, uh, pro, you know, like a project out of Europe. Um, because I think there, there's less of that spin. Um and I think a little bit more factual because it's not as close to them. I mean, you can be close to the subject, but it's not like, you know, my dad saw Ali, for instance, and he bet on the sixty on the on the Sunny Liston fight where he won the world championship. And he has a famous story. He was an eight to one underdog, and my dad's bet bet twenty bucks on Ali, and you know, twenty bucks back in the early sixties was like you know, probably like two hundred three hundred dollars now. So um, and he got eight to one odds on that. So a lot of people have that recollection or their parents do. And so I think it's good that distance. So, and I like this book very much. I like the use of these, of the inside cover in the first page here. It's uh, a short bio of the main characters in this story and all these life, either directly or indirectly. Um, and the art style is pretty effective. Like this one page of this one punch. I mean, if you've ever seen a boxing photo where a guy gets hit in that one moment where he gets hit and all the sweat just flies off. That's a real powerful picture. Um, it's great art. Um, I like the use of this negative space here. And then it just starts off with him being in Louisville and growing up in Louisville. And then the story about how he trained and how he got into boxing to kind of like, kind of like get him out of trouble as far as like, things that he wanted to do he actually went to Rome for the Olympics he won a gold medal and then there's a true story about when he went back home he and a friend went to a restaurant he was like no I want a gold medal I can go in this restaurant even though they say they don't serve black people I want a gold medal so I can eat there and they just kicked him out so he was so disgusted that he threw his gold medal into the river um, so then they talk about the time that he went to Miami and then they talk about the time that he got involved with the nation of Islam and he um, converted to Islam. Um, and then his friendship with Malcolm X and then all the little things they used to do to like get out of their skin of Sonny Liston and all his other opponents. And like I said, the art here is very consistent, but this one page we talk about Ali's technique is really effective and explaining why his technique was different than other people's and why it was so effective. And I like the art, it's a lot simpler. It's almost like one of those things where you, when you go on a plane and it says, this is how you put your seatbelt, this is how you get your flotation device inflated, etc. So it's a nice change of pace. And instead of having the black background, it's a like a green olive. I think it's a nice choice. And so um, they talk about the fights here and then they go on to his other fights and some of the psychology he did. And, some of the things that were really going on. And these are little things, I've seen a few documentaries on Ali, and these are just things that a lot of them I know of, but there's some little things like, oh, I didn't know about that. And so they do talk about um, how after Malcolm X split from National, from Nation of Islam, excuse me, they met in Nigeria, and Malcolm X said, listen, I wanna to talk to you, and, Mal and Muhammad Ali knew he was being watched by Nation of Islam, and he chose to turn his back on Malcolm X. Something that later on he said that he regretted. They talk about how Malcolm X, because he was very close to Malcolm X. They were like almost, they're like best friends. And like how somebody tried to poison him. And then they talk about J. Edgar Hoover with COINTELPRO, how he was doing the surveillance program. And anybody that he thought was a communist or a threat to the United States, which meant potentially anybody. 
uh, Malcolm X's assassination, uh, which is very factual and it's pretty, it's not drama, it's not made dramatic. It was already dramatic. And then they talked to him about, you know, his friends were telling him, hey, listen, Nation Islam, they maybe don't, maybe don't have your best interests. And he's like saying, no, they do. So with a lot of things in real life where um, he's here with the second fight with Liston and they show this needle because Sonny Liston in real life died in 1970 and he died of a drug overdose, which a lot of people that knew him say was made no sense because A, he didn't do drugs and B, apparently he hated needles. But he did have mob connections. He did have everything. So there is that little needle right here in his arm, you know, you know, with the tied up here, so that way the veins would pop out. Just that little thing, like, is it was he assassinated or not? And then here it talks about Ali's, you know, his fighting during the sixties and also his challenging of going to war. And he was a conscious objector, and he lost his title and he lost his boxing license and he lost it for three years of the prime of his career. Talk about other events in 1968 that helped shape him and how he saw the world. And you talk about his comeback and, um, you know, the fights that he had. And so it's pretty good as far as being pretty fair and balanced as far as presenting Ali. They do show his weaknesses. They do show his things. They don't go one way too much or another. Like they don't mention like the Beagle visited him in Miami, you know, which is fine. But then they didn't get into a lot of the other stuff that was really negative about, you know, some of his personal life. Like, you know, he did have kids outside of his marriage, so on and so forth. So I think it was like good middle ground, but it didn't like paint him like a super God. Um, it gets to the point where Freddy Pacheco, his doctor, says, listen, I can't keep shooting Novocaine in your hands so you can box. You're getting too old, you know, and he just quits. And then just shows his kind of his downfall, like how he's still fighting and he's older and he's just not the same guy. And then his diagnosis with Parkinson's. And I like this because he gets the diagnosis with Parkinson's and then here, style-wise, you have this bright painted page that kind of just shows all the things that are going through his head. And it's a real stylistic break, but it's to me, it's really effective because it's almost like an impressionist painting there. You can recognize it's him, but there's all this going on. I think it's a nice break. You know, it's a, it's a bold choice kind of artistically, but it's it sticks out. And then later on, it just talks about the end of his career. And they talk about America now as of 2014. Because a lot of the things, instances with racism that he dealt with were things that still occur today. And then the back of the book here, a nice use of the back as well. Um, this is a really well done book. Um, it was published originally in Europe and I only regret that I have is that this size about, is a little smaller than a standard comic book. I wish this would have been like the big European size because the art is great on this smaller format, it works. But on a bigger size, to me, it just would have been even better. But um, it's a really good book. It's a really good um, study of Ali. Um, I think it's a good down the middle, um, you know, kind of like observation about him. I think it's better than a lot of the documentaries that I've seen, even the most recent HBO one. I think in a lot of ways, it's, this came out a few years before the recent HBO one. And to me, it's almost like the HBO one. There's a lot of events here, a lot of takes that they covered that I found here. But this was done like five, six years beforehand. Um, it's a good graphic novel. If you really want to get a good view of Ali, um, his whole life, um, this is a great way to start. Um, it's very well done. Um, amazing, the artist, amazing, Amezion. He is on the... Uh, Cafe Facebook group. He's a very nice guy, very passionate. He's just a comics guy. Um, and I think this is just a really good book. It's well done. Um, even if you're not into boxing, I think it makes it interesting because they talk a lot about the technique and the things that he would do in the ring to like tire out an opponent or how strategy wise he would attack a certain opponent. So it's a really solid book. 
Um, I recommend, and if you're interested in Ali, I would read this. I think this is really very well done. Um, and apparently um, they're coming out with another book from a different subject um, by Fanographics later this year. And um, I think they are a good team and they do good work. Anyway, just wanted to uh, talk about it. Again, if you're interested in, if you're a fan of Muhammad Ali, you'll like this. If you're interested in knowing more about him, you'll like this. This is not dry, but it's not trying to be sensationalist either. Thanks.